It's the Celebrity Master Chef final. I have to say, I have loved this year's competition. Ah. Oh. Yes, there's been stressful moments. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. oh! What are you up to? But it's been joyous. Oh. <laughs> hey! When you look at the three finalists, it's easy to understand why. I didn't believe in any way, shape or form I was good enough to make the final. I'm now just going to try and absolutely cook my heart out in order to see whether or not I can win it. Why not? Give it a go, eh? I'm here. I am taking major proactive steps to make sure I do my best today. I've won two sports bras. Two. When you're this close, it's just agony not to take the crown in it. It's agony not to walk away with that trophy. So, yeah, I want to win. I think you've got to be proud of yourself in the final. I didn't want to tell my mates just in case they went out first and they could all take the mickey out of me. Well, when they see this interview, I'm already in the final, so... All right, boys. <laughs> I'm in the final. This is the sharp end of cookery. And quite frankly, I can't wait. Mr. Wallace, welcome to Celebrity MasterChef, the final. I want to say thank you very much and, of course, a huge well done. I can honestly say it's been a great pleasure. It's been an honour. You have a massive challenge. The first time in the competition, we're going to ask you to cook for us three courses of your own design, highlighting your journey throughout MasterChef. Two hours. At the end of this, one champion. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time, let's cook. Vicky bounded into this kitchen like a bouncy ball of energy. John, just loads of enthusiasm, but more importantly, a desire to learn. It's been such a blur. I look back on it and I'm like, I can't believe all the things we've done. Come and get it, guys! All the things we've achieved, all the places we've been, all the chefs we've met. Sexy! Woohoo! Let's go! <laughs> get it! <laughs> all the dishes I've walloped out. She takes little tiny bits and pieces and uses it to make sure her food gets better and better. I can't argue with delicious. You smashed it out of the park. Like, it's been such a roller coaster, but it's been amazing. Three courses, Vicky. What are you making for us? For starter, I'm making an Asian tuna tartare on wasabi avocado puree on sourdough crostinis. And then for my main course, pistachio crust lamb with smoked baby potatoes, wild garlic salsa verde, and then for dessert, flourless chocolate tart, chantilly cream and raspberries. Vicky, your menu sounds great. Do you think? Yeah. Oh, you just so got to get it done. I know. Have you changed, Vicky, since you first came in here? I was doubting myself when I first got here, and now I have a real sense of self. I've really loved learning something new and finding myself again. Um, so it, it's meant a lot to us. A tuna tartar, fresh, nice little cubes of tuna with a fair amount of chilli in there. I like spicy. On top of a wasabi avocado puree. Absolutely beautiful combination of flavours <laughs> and colourful on a plate. Brilliant. I love Asian flavours. It's one of my favourite cuisines to eat when I'm out and about. And I never really explored it on Master Chef. Just thought, now's the time. Do something you enjoy, do something you love. Stop, stop spitting at me. The main worry for me here is, in fact, in the main. Rack of lamb is difficult. <sighs> she won't know whether each individual cutlet is cooked until she slices it. What next? 
On the side of that, she's got a wild garlic salsa verde. And then we've got little baby potatoes. She is smoking. She's set light to hay. And then put the potatoes inside to be able to give a smoky flavour around the outside of the potatoes. Well, quick, it's quite burning. No, that's too smoky. Ah. Perhaps it's... No, it's too smoky. In terms of the dessert, I just don't think if it hasn't got chocolate in it, it's a dessert. So I'm taking control of that and doing a nice gooey cake, a tart. I put tart on the end, I don't really know what it means. I'm just trying to sound fancy. I think it's a tart. At least I hope it's a tart. All she's going to do is make sure that's cooked in the centre, because when she cuts open that cake, if it's not cooked in the middle, she has got disaster. Yay! I don't think I've allowed myself to imagine winning the trophy, although I do proper believe in, like, visualising stuff. So I'm kind of torn. And breathe. <laughs> I don't want me subconscious to think I'm cocky and then the universe to be like, ha-ha, karma, you're not going to win. But similarly, I don't want to not envisage it and then they'll be like, well, we didn't know you wanted it because you didn't envisage it. Do you know what I mean? I'm torn, universally, so to speak. <laughs> Guys! 45 minutes have gone. Think they've had a little bit too long, don't you? I need more sourdough bread. Neil's food has always been generous, full of flavour and crowd-pleasing. My mum's really, really proud. That's it. Happy. Happy with that, chef. My wife cried her eyes out when I got into the final. I thought I was one-dimensional cook. Woo! Big plates of food. Can't see the floor. But they've changed me style. Very nice. Oh, I've never done anything delicate like this. It did really well. Oh! Smartest plate I've seen you do, Neil. No, it's a bit more exotic. If Razor Ruddock invited me to dinner, I'm there. I'm doing a match pony and mushroom ravioli. The main, I'm going seared tuna on patchoy with Thai dressing and noodles. You like your Thai, so I'm going to try and impress you with your Thai food. And after, I'm going to do a chocolate mousse with caramel and hazelnut topping. Bit of decoration for me presentation is going to be spot on. What is today all about for you? Winning. <laughs> we need to win it, innit? It's all about winning, but beating these two. My mates. But as I say, if I don't win, we're all winners. If I win, there's two losers over there. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Neil. The first dish is a ravioli. Plump pillow full of mushrooms, which needs to be soft and generous with its filling. The actual sauce needs to be bursting full of flavour with stock and mushrooms, and then he's putting yeast extract in as well, which should make it really vibrant and very, very rich. At Monica's, she helped me make pasta. She was a great teacher, so today I'm on my own. I want to show the lads that uh, I've learned, I listened. A bit messy. I don't think my missus let me make pasta at home. <laughs> the kids would. Oh! It's all about timing as well. You don't want to overcook. You don't want your ravioli split. So it's a bit of a gamble. A seared piece of tuna. What I want is some colour on the outside. I wouldn't mind some brown bars in stripes down it and a nice slice of pink in the middle. A bit of Thai sauce on top. A few chilies, a bit of ginger in there, chili noodles. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Dessert from Neil now is chocolate mousse. Robust and generous, the food that he loves to make. Across the top, he's got salted caramel, almost butterscotch. And then he's going to have hazelnut. Hazelnut, salted caramel, chocolate, perfect combination together. John, that is a beautiful bowl of sweetened, heavenly, light, fluffy brown, and I love it. You put your spoonful of that in your mouth, I defy anyone in the world not to go, 
Wow. It's gorgeous. Posh little champagne glass there, Neil. More of a martini glass, that, Chef. Don't get much cider in them, Neil, do you? Don't drink cider anymore, Chef, for the diet looking after my body. Just vodka now. To safe win your titles, to safe win your FA Cup finals, to safe win your Masters. Chef. No, you've got to go for it. There's only one chance, and you've got to take it. How long we got, please? 30 minutes left. Good. I'm on, I'm on target. Greg is a proper grafter. Really rolls his sleeves up and gets stuck in. I've worked incredibly hard to get to this point. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty. Greg, you want a real man to help you do that? If you can find one, mate, that'd be really good. I am thrilled to bits. I have a young family. I want to spend time with them. But that does make something like this quite difficult. Boys, you have got to be proud of that. But it's been an incredible journey. You are a professional, eh? I can't complain in any way, shape, or form. It takes a skilled pastry chef for years to learn techniques like that. Oh, well done. Oh, really, really impressive. Greg is a seriously talented cook. So we're starting off, we're going with a, a scotch egg, which is going to have some chorizo and some chili in it. I'm putting that into a sort of rusty nest, so it'll look like an egg in a nest. And then with that, a spicy mayonnaise and some asparagus tips as well. Then we're going on to a rack of lamb that's going to be herb crusted. And then we're going to have some Savoy cabbage. And it's a Hasselback potatoes. Dessert. So I, I took on a lot when I worked with Monica the other day. The dessert is going to be cremo with biscuit base with a bit of a twist. So I'm adding a raspberry jelly to go with the dark chocolate. Have you really got enough time to do all this? We're going to find out, I think. Crying out loud. I knew Greg would go for it today. I knew he'd be ambitious, but that I didn't realise just how ambitious. I've given myself so many things to do. I'm an idiot. I'm not sure I can get it all in. A scotch egg with chorizo meat around the outside, that's going to sit on top of, like, a bird's nest of potato. And then he's got a spicy mayonnaise. That's delicious and should look an absolute picture. Main course is a herb crusted rack of lamb. Lamb's got to be pink in the middle, the herbs on the outside bright green, but sort of toasted and holding on. Looks pretty good. With that, two purees an onion and garlic puree, fantastic with lamb, that's rich and full of alley and bite. And then he's got mushroom puree. That's quite wet, two wet things. And then on top of that, we've got a red wine sauce. I hope it's not too much. Greg's dessert is the most ambitious dish in the room. And it is raided without any shame, quite rightly, straight from Monica's kitchen. He's going to have a sweet biscuit. On the top of that, he's going to have the chocolate mousse that he made with Monica. On top of that, a raspberry jelly, and then Chantilly. Wow! That sounds beautiful. I don't have the Olympics anymore. I have a MasterChef final. And I'm putting the same amount of effort that I put into winning the Olympic gold medal into trying to win the MasterChef trophy. Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, still loads to do, and I don't feel like I've got an awful lot of time. Just ten minutes, please, you three. Yep, ten minutes. I'm not sure that's a nest, possibly a crown. <laughs> Far too squishy. Okay, Vicky? Definitely been better. How are you? A little anxious. <laughs> I'm a little anxious, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> are you happy? Oh, God, yeah, like you wouldn't believe. We need food on plates. You've got two minutes. <laughs> Come on, you lot. Finishing touches.
That's it. Time's up. Stop. <sighs> oh. Wow. Your socks are unbelievable. I'm well done. Well done, everyone. Well done, son. Well oh, done, mate. Did that go oh. quick, though? Neil Razor Ruddock, come on, let's taste your dishes. Gentlemen. Neil Starter is mascarpone and mushroom ravioli served in a mushroom and yeast extract broth. That's fantastic pasta. And that sauce with the yeast giving it meatiness and saltiness is delightful. Thank you. The mushrooms are lovely and soft. The mascarpone gives it richness. It's got style, it's got elegance, it's got absolutely everything, and it tastes fantastic. Thank you very much. Five minutes in, one nil up. One nil up, it's a bad time to score. You got rolled on there, aren't yeah. I? <laughs> <laughs> Neil's main is Asian-style tuna marinated in ginger, served with chili noodles, pak choy, and a seaweed crumb. Cooked beautifully, well done. I've got a nice bit of colour on the tuna, but it's that ginger, that heat, and that salty crumb is a really lovely flavour, really Moorish flavour. Thank you. I find the bok choy overcooked and a bit bitter, which is a real shame. But love the tuna, love the noodles, and love the spice. Neil's dessert is a chocolate mousse layered with salted caramel crushed hazelnuts and raspberries. You've got caramel on there that tastes like butterscotch, which is a flavour that I absolutely have loved since a child, with creamy chocolate as well. It's great, but it's a little bit liquid. It needs to firm up a little bit. I feel like I've slid down the Easter Bunny's burrow face first. <laughs> chocolate, it's caramel, it's nuts, and it makes me smile. Thank you. If you consider pasta, bake and garlic bread, and now you look down <laughs> at what you're doing here. Correct. Check you out. <laughs> oh. That was so good. Wow. That was so good. I think they get a little bit picky in the final. They're looking for things to, to moan at. But I am really, really pleased with my effort. I've given myself a chance to win this, and that's all you can do. Hi, right, guys. Can I say something to you, Greg? I'm amazed you got all this work done. Thank you. Greg's starter is a chorizo scotch egg in a curried potato rosti nest alongside asparagus and a cayenne pepper mayonnaise. The star of the show is obviously the chorizo scotch egg. Crispy on the outside, nice egg in the middle, and it tastes fantastic. Thank you. And the rest of the elements are fab. Asparagus is cooked beautifully. Your potatoes are seasoned well. They're crispy. I really like it, Greg. Thank you. Greg's main course is a tarragon and mint-crusted rack of lamb served with baby carrots garlic and shallot puree, mushroom puree, savoy cabbage, Hasselback potato, and a red wine sauce. Mm. Your sauce is really rich from red wine. Your lamb's cooked really beautifully, but that crust has a massive whack of tarragon in it, which I think is absolutely fantastic. The potatoes, crispy on the outside, soft in the middle. The power of that garlic and onion puree is big enough to take your breath away. Mate, there's lots of boxes and you're sticking a big fat tick in every single one. What can I say to you? To finish, Greg has made a shortbread biscuit topped with dark chocolate crema, a raspberry jelly, chantilly cream and chocolate shavings. Look at that.
that crema is perfectly set. Your biscuit is wonderful and soft. So biscuit and chocolate, really, really like. Raspberries and cream, I really, really like. When I have it all together, it's a bit rich for me. Right. It's taken on the natural summer sweetness of the fruit. And inside the fruit is a little bit of chocolate. It is just divine. How are you feeling? <sighs> Relieved, to be totally honest. I knew I took on an awful lot of work. And to see it plated and actually taste edible, I'm, I'm thrilled to bits of it. I'm no fan. <laughs> well, hold it. Well done. Well done. That's so I'll good. do it. Well done. Oh, done. Thank you. Fucking the next one now, isn't it? Vicky, oh, please. Vicky's starter is tuna tartare, served on a wasabi avocado puree with sourdough toast. Nice, cool bits of tuna, really good squirt of sharp lime, gentle heat through the creamy avocado mousse. That is light and refreshing, but still packs a really good flavour punch. The tuna's cut perfectly. Every single piece, exactly the same as each other. Crunchy bits of bread, nice bit of texture. I think it's a lovely little starter. Vicky's main is pistachio-crusted rack of lamb, served with wild garlic salsa verde, smoked baby potatoes and asparagus. The lamb, unfortunately, is slightly under, but then if you get the edge, you get a lovely bit of smokiness from that pistachio crust underneath the lamb. Is this amazing, vivacious, vibrant salsa verde. And with the potatoes and the asparagus, it's delicious, absolutely delicious. I don't get any smokiness from those potatoes oh. at all. Nearly blinded myself and lost an eyebrow, and they don't even taste like smoke. I'm fuming. <laughs> but your salsa verde is out of this world. I really wish that lamb had been better cooked. For dessert, Vicky has made a dark chocolate tort served with Chantilly cream and raspberries. That cake is chocolate rich, not too sweet at all. And then it's got the ultra sharp sweetness of those raspberries in there as well. Absolutely spoon lickingly delicious. It's got lovely textures of crunch as well as sort of pillowy softness. I love it. Absolutely love it. Delicious. Can't fault it. Thank you so much for being so lovely. Um, and I'm really happy. He's a, he's a dead canny, aren't you, really? Well done, girl. So frustrated. I dropped the ball a little bit on a couple of things. Well done. Mm. Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> but at the same time, I had some lovely comments. Some praise that I honestly just don't even think I deserved. It feels like parents' evening. <laughs> So scary. I think it's been an absolutely fantastic final. Full of surprises, full of energy, full of great personality. The fact is, though, now we've got to choose our champion. We expect big flavours from Neil. That's what his food's always been about. And he delivered it today in spades. Vicky, you look at what she produced in this final. I mean, really, Vicky has done herself proud. We know how ambitious Greg is. Greg was aiming at nothing short of fine dining. I admire his skill, and I admire his bravery. I've been in scenarios like this before where you can sort of taste a medal and sometimes it doesn't happen. It really is gutting because you put so much effort into it. It's a long time since I've been proud of myself. So this is like sort of a, a big competition and the taste of it is really nice and 
and just want to win that final and lift that trophy and go home and have a nice cuddle and a drink with the wife. Half of us wants to build a pillow fort and hide in here and not find out who, who wins. But then the other half of us is like, you know what, you've done really proud. Get out of that fort and go and face the day. Well, did you see the flames in the sky? Were you blinded by the light? Did you feel the smoke in your eyes? Did you... <laughs> Good luck, sweetheart. Good luck. Did you see the sparks fill the hole? You are not alone, because someone's out there sending out flames. I've been inspired by you three. It's been fantastic to watch the change and the dedication. So thank you so very much indeed. I'm getting ready. Our celebrity MasterChef champion. It's Greg. <laughs> well deserved. Well done, Greg. Well deserved, son. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. You've been awesome. An amazing Thank competition. You. I've learned so much. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much indeed. Thank you very much. Pleasure, he deserved it. He guys. deserved it. Pleasure, big fella. Oh, well done, son. Oh, I love. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. That's what I really wanted. <laughs> There's no shame in my game. I don't mind admitting it would have been fantastic to win but I do feel like I've won already. This gave us a creative outlet, something positive in my life. And through learning to cook and learning to love something else, I sort of learned to love myself a bit again as well. I consider that a win, trophy or not. I've learned so much. It's been one of the best experiences of my life. Honestly, I'm so proud of myself. Proud of Greg, he was better on the day and the best man won, so no complaint. You know how you got that medal, right? And it was made of gold? We got something better. <laughs> there you go. That's yours. I can't believe it. I actually, I genuinely can't believe this. I've got the trophy. It happened. I can't believe it. Greg is a deserved winner. He came into this competition knowing food as fuel. He's walking out of this competition in love with food. Greg deserves every single shiny millimetre of that trophy because he has put everything into it. This, to me, is right up there. I'll be totally honest. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it is right up there because I didn't practice for 15 years to get to this point. I learned in six, seven weeks. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud as punch of that, I'll be totally honest. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty special. Yeah.